right, Genesis chapter 12. Now from Genesis chapter 12, we come into a very special area because from here we talk about a very important man in the Bible. And his name is Abraham. Now this is the fourth dispensation. This is where we find the promise. Last week I gave you a sheet which talks about different types of dispensations and also the covenants. This is called the Abrahamic covenant. Now, <clears throat> in chapter 12, you find verse 1 says, The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. See, we need to know that God is talking to a 75 year old man. He's already established in life, he's quite a rich man. And God suddenly says, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, go to the land I will show you. He doesn't say, Go to the land, go into so and so land. Today, if you ask somebody, Hey, would you go to Africa? Well, that makes sense. But if I call you and say, I want you to go to so and so place, and I will tell you that place later, what would be your response? Where is the map? Do you really know where you're going to send me? Abraham never questioned all this. See, I will show you, future tense, leave your country, your people, your father's household. Okay, I leave everything and come out. Where do I go? God says, I will show you, future tense. You see, the faith that God was instilling in Abraham, okay? Then he says, he gave a promise. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This is the Abrahamic covenant. The promise that God made to Abraham. What was that? I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So this is a very simple, this looks very simple, but it has got so many seeds of blessings in it. The first thing we need to remember is, verse 4, So Abram left as the Lord had told him. You see, there is no argument, there is no discussion, there is no uh, further clarification required. And who is this man? Abram was an idolater. They used to make idols. They used to worship idols. And from the idol worship, God calls one man and says, Hey, come out. What did he do? <coughs> Simply obeyed God. So the coming out of Abraham from his hometown or his country, from his people, is not on his own. If you are trying to understand what we are looking at, spiritually speaking, this is nothing but what Ephesians chapter 2 talks about. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. And then what did Jesus do? He quickened us. He made us alive. By faith through grace you are saved. So therefore it is God who has to call you. You getting it? It is God who has to call you. Abraham did not decide on his own to come or follow God. It was God who called him out. So the, at the command of God you find Abraham Abram started following God, not on his own. The promise that God is giving here, we will try to analyze it. In these two verses, you find the promise here. Okay, we'll talk about that promise. Now, when God, when he was 75 years old, God gave him this promise. Okay, then what did he do? Verse 5, he took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. This might look very simple, but I want you to look at the last part of this verse and verse 5. 
they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. Can you see what a smooth journey that is? They started out, they reached. They started out for Canaan and they reached. No hiccups anywhere, no trouble anywhere. Now, I want you to compare the journey of the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan. In last week's topical Bible study we saw, using the map, where all they went. It took them 40 years. One whole generation died. But why is it that for Abraham it was such a smooth journey? You see, he's, go, he's coming out and going to Canaan. The journey for Canaan is so smooth. They started out for, for Canaan and they reached there. I tell you, I get so thrilled when I read this statement. They started out, they reached that is all the reward of the faith of Abraham. The faith of Abraham was rewarded like this. The problem, the, if you see from Egypt to Canaan, when the Israelites traveled, they could not make it. They could not reach in 40 years. It took them 40 long years. What's the reason? It's all because of their unbelief. Okay? Then, after they reached there, what happened? See, the Lord appeared to him, verse 7, and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Please remember, we are going to learn a lot of, lot of important spiritual lessons from Abraham's life. God appeared to him and he told him what? To your land, offspring, I will give this land. Okay? So there are two promises that God is actually giving to Abraham. Please remember this. The two promises are, number one, the promise of the land. The promise of the land. Now please, you must understand why today, in 2011, Israel is such a strategic, sensitive part of the world. It is because God has promised this portion of the land to the children of Israel. In 1948, in the month of May, when they all came together, it became a country. Before that, just imagine, just imagine how God proves this Himself. Let's talk about language. Language. When Jesus was alive here on this earth, and He died, He rose again, and in AD 70, there was a persecution. In AD 70 there was a persecution and all these people got scattered. From AD 70 on, there is no country called Israel. There is no map for Israel. Okay, then what? Now, just think about this. 1948, the country comes together. In AD 70 they, got, they disbanded. In 1948 they come together. Is it not a miracle that they have the same language? that they spoke several hundreds of years ago? I mean, they came from many, many different parts of the world. There were people who came from Ethiopia. There were people who came from, uh, you know, uh, 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 India. There were people who came from different parts of the world. They all came together. And there is a story said about this when the first parachuter actually landed in Jerusalem, you know what he did? He knelt down and kissed the ground. He said, Lord, you promised us this land. We have seen the war in 1966. We have seen how Hitler persecuted the Israelites. Despite all this, is God faithful? He gave them that land. He gave them that land. So the promise that God gave to Abram several thousands of years ago, He's still keeping it up. Your God, my God, is a faithful God. What He says, He will keep it up. So the promise He gave to Abram was for the land. The second promise He gave was for the children. He said, the promise of Abram is twofold. One is for the land, 
the other one is for his seed for his children okay so an abraham is known to be a man who builds altars what is the meaning of building an altar what is the purpose of building an altar it is to worship it is to offer a sacrifice so when when abram is building an altar he is saying lord i sacrifice myself before you so whenever he does this you find he is building an altar okay so when he builds an altar it means say i want to be completely surrendering to you then what happened we need to understand this part of the story of abram is interesting okay now when god visited him and said i will give you this land he built an altar verse 8 From there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched on his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east there he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord see again again is building an altar okay everything is going smooth in his life god is visiting him he is preparing an altar he has a blessing in his life he makes an altar he reaches a place in safety he makes an altar okay when he is living in canaan and that place you know what happened verse 10 now there was a famine in the land now there was a famine in the land now what do you mean by famine the f- famine uh, uh, affects what famine affects the basic necessity of mankind or survival that is food Now if you study food has been very very interesting right from the beginning of the scripture to the end you see the temptation that Abraham uh, sorry Adam and Eve had in the garden was what fruit what do you find in the new jerusalem and new earth new heaven and new earth tree or the which gives which has the fruit of life right the tree which gives you the fruit of life so it's there in the beginning it's also there so the food is a very important thing like look at jesus christ when he was uh, when he came out after the 40 days fasting right what is the first temptation he had to turn these stones into bread now famine will determine your priorities famine will always determine your priorities it will start asking you questions now who do you depend on is food important for you is or is god important for you now here what happened was there was famine in the land now is this not the place where god asked abraham to come absolutely right it was god who was directing him when he came out of his land of the ur of the chaldeans God said what I will show you the place. So God showed him the place to come to what place? Canaan. He came to Canaan. After he came to Canaan, God says, "Okay, now there's a famine." Now we have questions, right? Lord, if you wanted me to come here, why is there a famine? You gave me a promise, you wanted me to come here. I I came here, why is there a famine now? You know what? God is trying to test you. God is trying to test you and me. So here in this test what happened to Abram is the question. Okay? Now verse 10. Now there was famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe. This is such a powerful statement. There are three phrases I want you to look at. Number 1 is famine. Number 2 is went down. number 3 is for a while there was a famine and abram went down you know this language is so interesting he went down it we say he went down right so he went down to egypt even geographically he went down to egypt and do you think he wanted to be there forever no he wanted to escape the famine now is it wrong is it wrong you have famine in a in a in a piece of land is it wrong to go to another state where there is plenty of food no 
Yes, it is not. 